Sponsored by Arzopa. So we'll take a quick look at GIMP 3, which is coming out probably in the next month or so. We've got the RC one, the release candidate one. This is the biggest step in GIMP probably for more than 20 years now. And it is going to give us a lot of new features. But as you can see in the background, GIMP remains more or less the same. Now, this is not a tutorial. There are about 150 tutorials in the membership in the master of the archives and you can join the membership to see those if you want to so this channel used to do a lot of gimp tutorials and that is one of the legacies of those tutorials now when you first open up you get this screen this is just for the rc one and you can personalize with different one of the things i really like is that you can actually change the way it looks so you can change the theme and the icons and it does look quite a lot more. You can personalize it a lot more than in the past. Let's close this bad boy. And the user interface hasn't changed very much. A lot of the functionality remains exactly the same, but you also have quite a lot of new features and new modes of working. I want to really try to figure out how this now compares to Photoshop because when I used to do the tutorials, the idea was that GIMP can be used as professional software, not just as a gimmicky software for editing fa family pictures, but actually you can use it for professional work. So that was the emphasis. And what I want to do now is just see how much it actually uh, allows you to work professionally. Now, one of the things I've liked so far is that the user interface is pretty smooth now we're working with a fairly large image here actually it's not that large it's about uh, one or two megapixels and it's pretty responsive as we move it around and if we want to apply a filter let's go to curves and just brighten things up a little bit you can see it's very very responsive as we work with it like this and also with the filters let's just bring out something fairly obvious the blur filter it is so responsive and smooth really like the way it feels the way it works now let's open up a larger image and see how that how that functions this one is going to be quite a lot larger this one is about i think about 24 8 times 4 about 20 30 megapixels let's try a map let's try panoramic Ooh, that's looking good. As you can see at this sort of level, it does sort of, you get a little bit of screen tearing taking place. Now I'm working with a fairly, I'm working with a fairly, oh my God, that's looking good. I'm working with a fairly limited CPU. It's a kind of an entry level CPU. So it does struggle a little bit, but one of the limitations with GIMP is that you can't really accelerate it with the GPU in the same way that you can with Photoshop. And that limits how smooth things can be. And you know, you're working here with a really powerful filter, the panoramic projection. Wow, this is looking really good. <laughs> I'm really impressed by this. So you're working with the panoramic projection, which is a really, really tough filter on the CPU. And I think it's just working with a single core. You can see there that it's not really using all the cores on the CPU. So there's potential for it to be a lot better than this. Let's just spin things around a little bit. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. <laughs> okay, okay, let's change. Let's pan. That's what I wanted to do. Oh my God, that's a bit better. Let's pan around. Okay, that's a bit better. You can see it's fairly responsive, but it could be better. There's a little bit of lagginess and delay, but this is a huge image and a very challenging filter. If we go to the curves, just give this a try. Ooh, that's a lot more responsive as you can see now. Now I have to say, I think that that sort of recurse, that that panoramic filter, that's the kind of thing where GIMP actually sometimes outperforms Photoshop because those those filters in Photoshop can be slow as well. Let's try and apply one of the tools. And here you can see just how buttery smooth the, the response is with this, I think it's a 3D transform tool. I can never really get the hang of this. It, I always kind of lose it and I can't get it back. Let's reset. Let's cancel this and try basic scaling. Okay, that's not the one I want. Okay. Now obviously th this is a really entry level computer. So I'm not working on the fastest 
and th th this is one thing about GIMP. If you have a really fast CPU, it really, really rewards you. But if you have a slower CPU, you can get a little bit of lagginess. And it, it's just that with Photoshop, I'm just so much used to things running very, very quickly and very, very smoothly because of the GPU acceleration. Now there are some GPU accelerated features. So if we go to colors, desaturate, color to gray, this one is GPU accelerated and it runs very fast, but it, it is literally one of only a couple of GPU accelerated filters inside of the GIMP. And the GPU acceleration, it is experimental. You have to go and turn it on through a very complicated menu. Okay, we've got a new image. Let's choose blur, focus blur, to see if we can bring in a bit of focus on this image here. This is another really large image. So you can see this is a little bit like the blur, blur gallery inside of inside of Photoshop. And I there are some aspects of the way GIMP works, I actually prefer to, to Photoshop. I used to use GIMP a lot more than Photoshop when, when GIMP 2.10 first came out. Now there are a number of features which are completely new. There's non-destructive filters. So if I wanted to make this filter non-destructive, let me see, we can turn it off like that. That I think is the default. There we are. It's a little bit laggy as you can see, but we are working with very large images. So I would say probably if you're working with smaller images, this is very responsive software, which can get a lot done. Let's just scale this image scale and let's reshow that filter. It's a lot more responsive now. And uh, let's go ahead and see what it's like when we try to use it non-destructively. There we are. It's a lot faster. A lot more immediate. So there's a lot of potential there. I think if, if, if the software ran faster, that would be a major advantage. There are a huge number of updates which have been introduced with this new version. Impossible to cover them all. I just want to I just want to look at the basics and see how it feels using it. Now inside of Photoshop, this is Photoshop 2025. So you can imagine there's a ton of features which are kind of lacking in GIMP. So we can choose select subject and this will select the foreground and we can see how quick that was. And there's just a little bit that needs to be done there. But otherwise that was really quick and effective. And of course this can use the servers, uh, Adobe servers. If you have a slower computer, it will just take everything to the servers and process it there. We've got a whole bunch of AI related features. This is one of them for the generative fill. Now you can use stable diffusion inside of GIMP. That needs to be done using Intel hardware. Let's deselect and let's try that blur gallery. Let's try, I think, Iris Blur, which is the one. Now this is running on the GPU and it will be impossible, impossible. I think it's impossible to do this if you don't have a GPU. So GIMP has actually got an advantage, believe it or not. So we can actually increase this. There we are. It is buttery smooth, but you literally cannot do this without a GPU. So GIMP actually wins on this score because although it is sluggish, you literally can't do this inside of Photoshop unless you have a GPU. But of course, if you have a GPU, Photoshop really does pay you. And there are a lot of features inside of Photoshop that really do require that you're using a GPU. Let's not demonstrate this one. Let's go to filter, liquify. And there's nothing quite like liquify inside of the GIMP. So we can, once again, we've got, uh, maybe this is not the best image to test with. Let's just grab this and let's do something crazy. Okay. <laughs> That's not very good. That's not very nice. There's something I could do. We just make her a little bit larger like so. I don't I don't think we should do that. This is the kind of feature that GIMP lacks, the kind of really responsive features which rely on the GPU. And that, those are the features that really make Photoshop uh, sing and sing and dance. The AI related features, especially the select subject features, I think are absolutely incredible. Now, if we bring something like this panoramic image here, we used to be able to edit the panoramic images inside of Photoshop. We could actually, we could actually just bring them in here. There used to be a filter 3D menu and it used to work really well. 
at one point and then it sort of became very very buggy and then they they got rid of it let's zoom in so we can't do the the 3d panoramic thing that we were doing in gimp that's something again which gimp has an advantage of over photoshop because you can do it inside of gimp you literally cannot do it inside of photoshop now let's go ahead and choose an object object selection there we are we can select objects using artificial intelligence there we are and we can then use generative fill and let's say car or vehicle and we've got our vehicle there let's see what alternatives we've got we've got a few vehicles and i don't know if we can actually zoom in a little bit let's zoom into 100 okay those are the images that were created that's a car that one looks reasonable i suppose I was expecting a bit more of a space-like vehicle, but it's given me a limousine. So you've got this fill, generative fill, the artificial intelligence. I haven't been able to try this inside of GIMP with the stable diffusion. We can actually go ahead and merge everything here. And let's go ahead and try the non-destructive filter. Now to, to use a non-destructive filter with Photoshop, we need to create a smart object. So let's unlock this create a smart object and if you've got a powerful computer this does work quite a lot better we can then go ahead and say let's choose a very demanding filter field blur or maybe let's change that to iris blur there we are and if we hit ok it should now create a filter that is non-destructive there we are and it's a lot more responsive i think largely because of that gpu but you can see here we're beginning to get GIMP catching up in some respects. It's got features that you don't find inside of Photoshop because Photoshop sometimes breaks and they get rid of features. And it's got functionality that we didn't have inside of GIMP that we now have. Uh, I think if that GPU acceleration was added to GIMP, it would make a world of difference for me personally. But if people are using GIMP to edit images that are one or two megapixels, I don't think it makes too much difference. You can actually get quite a lot of responsiveness. Hey tech lovers, meet the Arzoba Z1RC, your best in portable monitors. With its brilliant 2.5K QHD resolution and best of class 500 nits of brightness, you're getting unparalleled visuals for work and play. Enjoy true to life colors with 100% sRGB coverage, all in a sleek, lightweight, portable design. You need flexibility? The Z1RC delivers with the dual USB-C and mini HDMI ports, making it the perfect companion for any device, Mac, Windows. And the best part, you get all this top tier performance without breaking the bank. Upgrade your display game with the Arzopa Z1RC today.